guys, you guys been touring a lot, do a lot of touring. What's so far the most memorable moment on the road? Um, blowing out the transmission in South Dakota the first day I ever saw snow. It was negative 30 degrees outside and broke down in between Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, and Rapid City, South Dakota. Just literally 50 miles from like electricity, apparently. And um, yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and we were there for like two days trying to get it fixed. But I never, I saw all the snow for the first time that morning and was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we started driving in it, and the van's sliding everywhere, and we get about an hour down the road, and the transmission just stops. And so, hate snow. Hate snow. Hate snow. Yeah. Uh, worst things, I mean, best and worst, I don't know. Worst would be like getting sick. This past time for me was one of the worst times because it just bummed me out. I could ask everybody else if you're here every night about myself when I walk off stage. And it's like I sound like, uh, you know. I think it's best. I mean, there's, so, there's too many going you know, for best. Like for me, everybody laughs at me. Like my favorite part of touring is going out to South Dakota and like, Riding on the water slides and stuff at the oh, hotel man. you stayed at. That was like that was that was the uh, For some reason, <laughs> every hotel in South Dakota has at least a 100 foot water slide oh, yeah. in the hotel. Wow. Yeah, built in. And <laughs> so the first thing we do is freezing cold, and uh, so we find one with a big water slide, pool, and uh, indoor, and hot hot tub. And the um, so first thing we do is we just go find a place. We hit that up. I mean, Jeremy, then, yeah, Jeremy's mom got us a hotel. Yeah, we, yeah. Just, we wouldn't have been able to do it. We just we couldn't do it. And then uh, uh, 15 minutes in, I think Dean was on his stomach and Scott was riding on his back all the way down a twisty slide and, and getting in hot tubs. I just, yeah, that's always good. It's awesome. So what's, what's the best thing about being in the band, being in this band? For us, probably the ministry. Yes, and the, the fellowship too. Like just get to just do what we love and be able to like just you know show just God's message and just like love to them. So just be able to just get that out there to kids who wouldn't hear it any other way. You know, and just just having so much fun, just going all over the place, just like meeting kids, just seeing just everything that we do, and just being able to just like play music and just do this is amazing. Yeah, we're so blessed that we're called to play music for a living and. Have it touch kids' lives. Like just tonight, for example, we had a guy come up to us and he said, "I know you don't know me," and he came up to Dean first, and he eventually told all of us individually. But he said, "I don't, I don't know if I've told you this before, but I, I listened to you guys' CD, listened to the song Golgotha for a, a long time, and uh, that song was actually what got me saved. And like that's just the reason we're out here. I mean, it just, you know, times are hard when you don't have any money and you're doing this 24/7. You got people back at home you love, you want to see, and then." Kids come up like that, and you know it's all worth it to, to be out here and living hard, you know, and not making money. I really only have one thing to say. Whether you know him or not, no matter what's going on in your life, come out of the darkness. Come out of the darkness and into his life. His light is drawing you, his light is calling you. To those of you who are Christians out there, we're living in vital times right now. Can't even go to church without some people coming in trying to shoot us. Stand strong. Shade of what you believe, no matter what it comes to. What we need to show the world is the real Jesus Christ, not some flaky, some flaky, stupid t-shirt bull crap that we see out there marketing his name. Um, all right, guys. Um, while we're on the subject of, of ministry, um, there's in the scene today. There's sort of like a mix of, of kids who are believers and kids that aren't. I'm wondering, what's your opinion on the state of Christian bands in the in the scene today? And what are some of your experiences with those? I know you were talking about a minute ago. Uh, the kid coming up and, and telling you about the, the song that's got him saved. Um, what are some other experiences, whether they're positive or negative? And, uh, if you can answer that for me. Uh, yeah, I guess as far as, you know, experiences with Christian bands, like, you know, it's so easy to, for people to look, because we, cause we are a Christian band, we represent Christ. So, you know, it, it's being a Christian in general, you know, they you stumble and fall or do anything like people are watching you and you know it's something we try to stress to people that you know guys we're not perfect you know but we rely on the grace of Christ every day you know and 
as far as, you know, experiences, there's been positive and negative. What's really sad to us is the people who were Christians or claim to be Christians that attack us for what we do and say that we're wrong because of the kind of music we play and because we might look different or have tattoos or you know, things like that and who really, you know, in my opinion, need to really study God's Word more. And, you know, and then we get kind of chapped when... You know, we see people that they say we are a Christian man, but they're not in the sense of, not that they have to be perfect, because none of us are perfect, but there's not even, I mean, they might even have someone who's not even a believer in their man. You know, and like, you know, you can be a Christian and be a mechanic. You can be a Christian and be a librarian. You know, if you're going to carry the name of Christ, and you need to be able to, you know, actually believe what you're saying, you know. And so many people nowadays, they could care less about God, but because there's some Christians in the band, and they can get in Christian bookstores, and they can get in Christian magazines, you know. But when it boils down to it, they're really ashamed to even stand what they believe in, but they're using it to make money, and that's really sad, you know. I'm really excited nowadays about the simple fact that, I mean, regardless of taste in music, this is just my personal opinion, but I'm so glad that Christian bands are, in my opinion, starting to take back, you know, good, strong music and being the forefront of that, not just, like, following a trend that started at the secular scene. Like, you've got your, you know, like, We're Trying to Do It, Impending Doom, Sleeping Giant, For Today, Plea for Purging, you know, that I think are, regardless of just in the Christian markets, some of the best bands you'll listen to, period. And I'm so glad that it's Christian bands that are starting it and not following behind what secular music, like, you know, God invented music and I'm so glad that we're taking it back and saying, you know, you know, we're going to start the trend, we're going to start the scene because, you know, it's, it's all God's in the first place and we want to show His glory through what we're doing. And I'm just, I'm super excited there's bands out there that are really strong about their faith and they're really working hard to do this ministry. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's like, you know, and then you have more and more of the Christians like, you know, there's so many bands who are Christian bands and love God, but maybe their calling's not really to talk much from stage about it. You know, you, just because somebody doesn't say something vocally from stage about it doesn't mean they're not still doing what God wants. Right. You have no idea what God's doing behind the scenes, you know. Well, we know lots of people that aren't very vocal from stage about it, but that doesn't mean that they're, you know, people, different people have different callings, you know, and... And, you know, just because someone leaves a Christian band and might join a non-Christian band or something like that doesn't mean they don't still have faith. You know, we just place so many and so judgy, you know. I don't, that's a whole different thing. But. What can we expect from you guys in the future? You guys got a CD and a tour coming up or anything, or what's up? The CD's coming out hard, it was called. Coming out with Victory Records on January 22nd. So, really freaking stoked about yeah. that. I yeah, haven't had no awesome. music in a while, so um, pre-order yeah. is even better. Yeah, pre-order it now. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-orders are up. So the talks of a music video, yeah. but I will have to be doing that. Yeah. It's kind of on us. we got to find the time in person, yeah. right? Yeah. But hopefully it'll come around the time of the, the album coming out. Yeah. And then we've got a couple of CD release shows that we're going to be doing with Plea for Purging and Handshake Murders um, for like a week or so. And then we're going out to California to do a nationwide tour with Carnifex and Impending Doom on a couple dates. And uh, a different, a different breed of killer. killer. Oh, so yeah. that should be awesome. Come on to Archetype once nothing starts December 28th. Yeah, that, that'll be before the album, but so. that, that tour will be amazing too. So Awesome. Well, everybody's going to be checking that out at uh, BannerSQ.com. This is With Blood Comes Cleansing on Victory Records. You guys go check them out. Yeah! Wow. Bring me food! <laughs> Hungry. 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 Arms <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all.